Am I using antivirus software for my $60 computer? Is ham radio frying our brains? And someone may have broken an ATOS, this time on Mailbag Monday. What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you've got a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at iCloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the description. Guys, we got three great questions for you, so let's hop right in. But before we do, let's take a look at some Black Friday deals. ABR Industries is giving 20% off site-wide today through November 29th. Make sure you let them know KMRD sent you. You can order online. You can call them by phone. And Redivis is also having 15 to 20% off on a lot of their radios like the Islands HD1, one of my personal favorites, the RT3S, some DMR radios, the RB86 and the RA25 GMRS radios. So check out Redivis and ABR Industries for your Black Friday deals. There will be links in the description. So let's get started. This viewer is asking, Mike, on your laptop you use for ham radio, the Evolve 3, the, the coveted $60 laptop, do you use any internet security or antivirus software? If you do, what is it that you use? So short answer, no, I don't use anything. Now, typically with a Windows computer, I wouldn't even want to bring it near the internet without any antivirus software, but because I only use that computer for ham radio related things like logging or programming uh, my DMR radios, and that's about it. Uh, I haven't found the need to use any antivirus software. I'm not really searching the web with it. I'm not going to nefarious places or installing weird software that, that could potentially have a virus on it. So I have not found the need to uh, at all. So there's your answer. If you're using it for anything more than ham radio, you're probably not going to have good results because it's really not a good computer. It's really not. Uh, but for the tiny applications that we use in ham radio, it's more than adequate. And uh, I have been virus free uh, since I got the computer. So thanks for writing in. Next, we've got a question about uh, ham radio frying our brains. Is this is this a thing that happens? Do this, Are the kids doing this? I've seen a few YouTube videos where operators are using an Elecraft KX2 or a Zygu 6100 in walkie-talkie mode, using a short vertical whip antenna and a PTT button on the radio to transmit. I would have thought this is very dangerous practice, as the radio would be emitting RF very close to the head, yes, uh, or brain of the operator, even, even using just five watts. Would appreciate your thoughts as I was thinking of doing exactly the same thing and don't want to fry my brain. So we've touched this before on the channel here, but I think it's it's definitely worth revisiting. And we can actually take a look if we hop over to ARRL.org. And right here where it says website search, if we just type in calculator and hit enter, we get this RF exposed uh, RF exposure calculator. So we can enter in our uh, parameters here. So power at the antenna, let's say we're using five watts. Now here we're gonna pick our duty cycle. So if we're just talking, um, no speech processing, heavy speech processing, here's all the different modes. So let's say we're using heavy speech processing. I've, I've usually got some compression on. I don't know if that counts as heavy speech processing or not. And let's say, uh, for me, typically, I'm just exchanging call signs and signal reports. So I'm going to say I transmit for one minute and receive for one minute. Uh, antenna gain with any of these vertical whips, I can't imagine you're getting any gain at all. It's probably a negative. So I'm just going to put zero. And our operating frequency, let's just say 14.0250. Why not? And then we go down here to hit calculate. And here's all the parameters. So the maximum allowed power density per milliwatt per centimeter squared is 4.4321, which means a minimum safe distance is basically a quarter of a foot away or three inches. So you're pretty safe there. If we go lower in frequency, let's say we're on the seven megahertz band. Now you can see we can pretty much at 0.1222 inches away from us or 0.12 feet uh, we're safe there with five watts now it gets a little further when you start going up so let's go to like 28 megahertz here you can see now we're almost a half a foot away and if we go to maybe 50.400 up there in the six meter portion there 
Now we're about a half an inch, a little over a half an inch away, but still, you know, you got it right here. So it's really pretty safe. Now, obviously, if you have some, some DB, which I don't think is possible, but let's say we have six DBI, we can calculate this. Now we need to be a foot away. Let's go back down to 14 megahertz. With six DBI, uh, we're still less than a half a foot away, which you're, you're not going to have gain on these kind of antennas. If anything, you're going to have, let's just make up an arbitrary number of minus six DB of gain. Uh, and let's go back up to 50.4 megahertz. And now you can see 0.26 inches away, or feet away rather. So very little uh, concern with, with running five watts in these HT kind of configurations. Y you just don't really need to worry about it. But again, ARL.org, type in calculator and you can kind of see what, uh, what your specific settings is gonna be. And if you can get the, the DB rating for your antenna, then you'll know exactly where you need to be. So great question. Definitely want to stay safe while we're playing radio. So thanks for writing in. Our last question comes in from a viewer who may or may not have slightly broken his ATOS antenna. Whoops. He says, Mike, uh, missed you at Huntsville. Saw you heading out uh, off the floor. I had a challenge coin for you, my way of saying thanks. Oh, thank you. Uh, recently, ATOS seemed to be stuck, not moving up or down. Went to give it a bit of motivation <laughs> and now six ball bearings came out i know where you're at there may or may not have happened to me any help on getting these back properly installed yes that is actually a very easy fix so let's hop over to the bench and i will show you exactly how to do that we're gonna need two tools to do this we're gonna need a phillips screwdriver not too big a one we're gonna be dealing with some small screws and we're going to need a three millimeter Allen wrench. First, we need to take this cover off. This is just a rubber cover, so you can kind of just grab it and twist it, and it will come off. Just slide it up the uh, whip a little bit. Then we take our Allen wrench. There's two hex screws, one here and one on the other side. We're gonna remove those completely. If you have a little dish lying around, it's a good idea to use that to keep all your parts from being lost. Now that our screws are out, we can remove our whip. And then we're simply going to slide the cover off. And those little ball bearings reside underneath these tabs. So this has happened to me and uh, it was a pretty easy fix. Just go ahead and unscrew these screws here. So you've got this little metal retaining clip that holds the washers in just like that. So that is what you've got going on right now, I would assume. So all you need to do is simply put the ball bearings back in place, put the retaining clip back over them, and just a little tiny Phillips head screw there. Replace that. And then do it so there's three of these around there, so there's where your six balls go. You shouldn't need to disassemble it any more than that, and you should be done now. So go ahead and put the cover back over. Make sure that you line it up. You may have to remove it with the holes in there so we can screw the whip back in. Insert your stainless steel whip and screw back together. I don't like to tighten it all the way down until I've got the other side in because this is what actually holds the whip in place. Make sure it is firmly seated before you go ahead and give it the beans. All right. Tighten that. Replace your rubber and you are done. Now, wasn't that easy? Hopefully, that's all you need to do to get your ATOS back up and running. Thank you so much for writing in. And uh, yeah, that's a... <laughs>
<laughs> that's a that's a oops mistake that I made uh, pretty much day one. So thanks for writing in, guys. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Mailbag Monday. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email k eight mrd at icloud dot com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject, and maybe your question will be answered on the channel. Until next time, we'll see you again on another episode of K eight MRD Radio Stuff seventy three, guys. <laughs>